Best tactic in football manager is an almost impossible thing to figure out. The people that get the closest are on this website called FM Arena. They run every tactic submitted to the site through thousands and thousands of tests. That's dozens and dozens of 38 match seasons. I know. I did the math. Out of all of the tactics submitted, the 15th best one is the 4-3-3 striker midfield trio. In their simulation tables, it averaged 64 points per 38 matches simulated, scoring 64 goals in that time. And while I promise you there are some absolutely insane tactics coming up in this video, this one it's just nice to prove that we can play the classics. It's a narrow 4-3-3 with a center midfielder on attack. I thought that was dead. I love center midfielders on attack. It's rocking two fullbacks on attack and three strikers, meaning this is a probably particularly lethal tactic when you're talking about the lower divisions. Three high energy athletes up there and you'll drive teams crazy with the Jagan pressing that is required from this team. And I guarantee you this is not the last high pressure tactic we are going to see here. In possession, the width is incredibly narrow, but the team is looking for the overlaps from the fullbacks on attack and to focus the play into the channels. But because of that narrow width, I imagine that means they're just concentrating on the half spaces involving those two pressing forwards and those two central midfielders, kind of overwhelming a team in a spot where they're not expecting to be overwhelmed. High tempo, low crosses, and running a defense. Oh, it's a simple shape initially, but the way the instructions are set up, I can see how this tactic would be incredibly difficult to game plan against because you already have the three strikers, and then you've got two midfielders and two fullbacks that just show up in your lap all of a sudden. And they're all overwhelming the middle part of the field while the ball is still focused on that kind of channel, not the actual middle of the field, but, you know, playing the flanks on a narrow width. That's the kind of creativity that we're looking for here. This tactic was submitted by Alex, sick name. FM Arena simulated it 2,400 times, 2,000 400 times in its simulation table. The 14th best tactic is called 343 Electric Style. It was also submitted by Alex, who was clearly on fire, and it has some of the same tenets, but it has a back seven. I love good back seven. If you've got an extra guy that can play center back, or maybe somebody that's very good at playing wing back, this might be the tactic for you instead of the last one. Or maybe it's the 13 you haven't seen yet. Why are you getting ahead of yourself? It's the least simulated one on this list on the newest patch of Football Manager, but it did drop an average of a plus 18 goal difference, and weirdly actually allowed one more goal on average than the tactic before. That's probably because the entire front four of this back seven is on attack. We've got double Segundo Volantes, double wing backs on attack. The front three is the same, but we're rocking three ball playing defenders on the back line here as well. This is essentially as risk taking as you can possibly be with a back five and two defensive midfielders. It does adhere to a lot of the same tenets as that 4-3-3 formation we were just looking at, but instead it emphasizes underlaps, perhaps in a bid to seek out the Segundo Volantes arriving late underneath. I can imagine that having underlaps on would actually draw those Segundo Volantes forward up through the middle of the park and allow them to get involved in the offensive part of the match. But this is a tactic that requires specific types of players to be able to play it. You need the wingbacks. You need two people that can play defensive midfield that actually have some sort of offensive ability. And that's an important thing to remember going through this. These are the best tactics when all things are equal except for the tactic, but in Football Manager there are so many variables that not every single one of these tactics is going to be just show-stoppingly amazing for you. That's why I've put 15 on the list instead of 10, because it gives us a wider cross-section of different types of tactics, one of which will almost definitely be able to fit your team. Or perhaps you can modify it just a little bit to fit your team. You get it. The 13th best tactic on Football Manager has a number combination that absolutely fires me up. It makes me think of the Brian Stewarts of old. The tactic's called the 442 Sorry. It was submitted by E Land Guy. What a guy. And it is outstanding defensively. In the simulations, it averaged conceding just 39 goals per 38 matches in 1,600 simulations, with a point average of 64.4 per 38. It is a 4-4-2 with a sunken midfield, one of my favorite setups, particularly when you're playing in the lower league. Now, it seems to be the way to do things in FM24. They have some particularly aggressive defensive midfielders, but there's an inverted wingback that fills in for the Segundo Falante on attack 
back to maintain most of the shape. There is a full back on attack again, and a more forward striker, deeper dropping striker combination, as well as some pretty simple winger rolls on the outsides. In possession, once again, though, shows something very interesting. The width is set all the way to narrow, and they're focusing play to the wings, but looking for the underlap. And they're looking for the underlap on both sides, which is actually really, really fascinating. Now on the left side, this is most likely the Segundo Volante, or maybe once in a blue moon, the inverted winger. On the right side, it's actually probably the striker holding the ball up and the inverted winger cutting inside of them, especially if this fullback on attack gets into the best attacking space. What's most surprising to me though, is it does effectively press out of a 4-4-2 with a sunken midfield. It is a Gagan pressing tactic of sorts. It does this not by taking away the actual front line of the opposition team, but by taking away that kind of secondary line and still preventing the team from being able to play through you. But it is also normal. And the 12th best tactic in Football Manager is not. Submitted by Jay, it's an absolute monstrosity titled The Kippa Fury. In 2,400 simulations, it's an absolute goal machine. This is The Kippa Fury. Hide your eyes if you have any sort of OCD against the, you know, asymmetrical nonsense going on here. You have a back five that only has one defensive midfielder in front of it, and that extra player, instead of having two defensive midfielders, turns into a right winger. You then have an offset pair of strikers and a normal number 10 sitting underneath them. As a fan of asymmetrical tactics, I say, hell yeah. He focuses the play down the wings and seeks out the overlap coming from the two wing backs, playing at a much higher tempo than normal, but also not all the the way narrow. This is only fairly narrow. It's a Gagan pressing tactic that looks to roll the ball out from the back. You will start to notice a few themes as we go through these. This almost feels like a tactic that you could go to if you were playing with a traditional back seven and then realized that you were losing late and wanted to get an extra winger on the field. I've always been a fan of these offset strikers. The two center backs get occupied with the central striker, and this guy can kind of just do whatever he wants. The 11th best tactic in Football Manager keeps our asymmetric role going. It's called the Yukina Asymmetrical 4312. I'll be honest, I think this is a beaut. I mean, just look at that nonsense. And it's the 11th best tactic in the whole thing. It also is our first sighting of the inverted fullback, a role I've absolutely fallen in love with this year. He's utilizing the offset striker here, but it's doing it in a way that is the opposite of what was happening before. We've got the advanced forward on the outside and a complete forward or kind of deeper lying forward in the middle. This creates a wild overload on the left with an inside forward that is probably where the vast majority of the goals in this tactic are coming from. You also have this wing back on attack over here who's able to join that party too. But if you possess the ball for a while, the Segundo Volante will also join the attack. And while we've seen tactics that seek overlaps and underlaps, this one seeks one of each. It looks for the wing back on the outside on the left, and it looks for the Segundo Volante's late run on the right side. Everything else in the tactic is fairly familiar to the meta we've seen so far. Congrats to Pen Pen for this submission. But it didn't crack the top 10. The 10th best tactic in Football Manager submitted by Gerard, the Electric. 433. But this is perhaps the least classic 433 you could possibly have. That's a back four there with two fullbacks on attack, two ball playing defenders, and then three defensive midfielders, but in a very aggressive setup with a roaming playmaker and two Segundo Volantes. Then there's the front three with two strikers, and they've gone with the advance forward in the middle and the two deeper lying forwards on the outsides. Looking to take advantage of the fact that there are no wingers, the tactic is, of course, entirely narrow and they're looking to pass into space to try and maybe catch the opponent out early with that front three. That's always a good idea with a front three, by the way. And as is the trend with Segundo Volantes, they're looking for the underlap on both sides to try and pick out that late run. But the build-up play initially focused to the fullbacks. Despite the fact that this formation, you know, has three defensive midfielders in it and four backline defenders, it is terrible defensively. It allowed 52 goals per 38 matches. What makes up for that and what makes it the 10th best tactic in football manager is it averaged 70 goals per 38 matches, everything else being equal, which is insane. But it pales in comparison to the ninth best tactic on football manager in absolute hell for leather offensive nonsense called the four triple two centrifuge box deformation. It is utterly 
supremely awesome. We have offset strikers that are both advanced forwards. We have two wide set attacking midfielders, two defensive midfielders that aren't Segundo Volantes, just defensive midfielders on support, a complete wing back on the left and a full back on the right, both on attack. Six of the 11 players on the field have an attacking mentality. And in case that wasn't enough, the base mentality is attacking. It is also the widest tactic we've seen so far with normal width focusing the play to the fullbacks and seeking out those overlaps from both of the fullbacks. Which is probably unsurprising because they have created a gigantic traffic jam in the middle of the field, but once the ball goes to the fullback and they hold up and wait for that overlap, that'll draw a defender and there just can't be enough defenders left to stop this tactic. Remember when I said 70 goals per 38 matches was a lot? Well, in 2,400 simulations, this tactic averaged 80 goals per 38 matches over the course of those simulations. 80! Who cares about defense when you're scoring that much? Cal Oxide is a mad genius. And we weren't done with the D formations because the eighth best tactic in Football Manager is the 424 D formation 2. Submitted by A Smile, it is not the same offensive juggernaut, but it did, obviously, do better. At first glance, it looks pretty similar to the previous tactic, but one of the strikers is dropping deeper, and we've got an actual winger out on the left instead of two attacking midfielders. We also have something that we've not seen before. We have a playmaker. Not a roaming playmaker, not a regista, right? We have a deep-lying playmaker sitting behind this couple of four on the right side of the opposition. Wing back and attack, and wing back back on support and you can see exactly where the overload is being created. It's almost like a tactic that's just been shifted over left one. Instead of a classic 424, we have a scrunched 424. It still plays incredibly narrow, but it's only seeking an overlap or underlap on one side. An underlap on the right side that is looking for this shadow striker because the defensive midfielder is a on support, DM on support, that's it. So the ball gets up into this place and if it's on the right side, they're waiting for that guy right here. He's going and he's probably scored. The seventh best tactic in Football Manager brings back a familiar face, Alex. It's called the 4231 Striker Madness. And I like Striker Madness. It's also been simulated more than any other tactic we've seen so far 5,200 matches. So the variation on this is much lower. And unsurprising for a tactic called Striker Madness, it scores a lot of goals 71 per 38 matches played. It works on just a balanced mentality, but it does create something that I've seen used very effectively in previous FMs, which is this four-person grouping of three strikers and an attacking midfielder. It then creates a block of a back six, but it also provides a wing outlet with two fullbacks on attack. So they're not looking to pick the ball up and dribble, but they are looking to get up and occupy this space. As you'd imagine, they're the focus of the build-up play and the players that receive the ball in the channels will look to hold it up and use those fullbacks in order to stretch out the defense. Unusually though, for a tactic that looks as narrow as it is, they're using a standard attacking whip. They're really showing off the fact that pressing forwards are in vogue and defensive midfielders on support really aren't that bad. The sixth best tactic in Football Manager though, brings back the madness. It's called the Osmo RPM. And the Osmo RPM's been simulated nearly 10,000 times on the newest patch, and it averages 70 goals per 38 matches. And it is gorgeously asymmetrical. It creates an overloading group between an outside attacking midfielder and two various strikers, the advanced forward on the outside and the deeper lying forward in the middle. It brings back our favorite Segundo Volante and puts a roaming playmaker behind it with just a natural winger on the outside. The Segundo Volante is replaced by an inverted wingback who then steps into the middle. And to add to that overload up front, we have a fullback on attack that's there to provide some width. As suddenly feels very classic at this point, we have an underlap looking for the Segundo Volante and an overlap looking to find that fullback on attack to help stretch the defense. But in a return to form for these top tactics, we are back to narrow to take full advantage of this overwhelming superiority in the middle of the pitch. While this tactic definitely requires some specific personnel, it's clear that that Churknam has cooked, hath cooked. Bring back the word half. To crack into the top five, you gotta be able to play defense. The fifth best tactic, the 3-4-3 Bulldak Park, allowing in 9,600 simulations, just 39 goals per 38 matches with an average goal difference of plus 20. It is though, rather amazingly, pretty darn aggressive. It has your standard back seven grouping, except for the fact that the entire front four of that back seven is all an attack with two Segundo Volantes on attack. In a very rare turn, it plays with two wingers, both as inside forwards that are basically getting out of the way and kind of 
joining the Segundo Volantes here. And then just an advanced forward in the middle. It also has something that is unusual. It has hit early crosses on, presumably to take advantage of the striker and whichever inside forward's able to get there in time. Perhaps the late arriving Segundo Volantes. Instead of looking for those Segundo Volantes, this is looking for the overlap, looking for those wing backs that are getting up the field instead. Despite having five players that are on attack, the mentality is once again set to balance. Likely a very serious contributing factor to the defense being so freaking good. The fourth best tactic in football manager is just plain weird and goes against a lot of the things that we've come to understand from the first 11. Submitted by Jay, it's called the 3322 Merc 400. And it uses, again, a back five with those three ball playing defenders at the back, two wing backs on attack, and one defensive midfielder on support. Then there's nobody in the center of the park all the way up to a pair of strikers. There are two inside forwards on support on the outside, cutting inside of those two wing backs on attack. This creates essentially a four man core right here, and then a six man attack. Submitted by Jay, it averages a plus 21 goal difference in 38 matches in the simulations. And it is a very heavily simulated one with 9,600 matches already run. The most interesting thing to me of all is the underlaps. It is looking or underlaps. With a very narrow tactic, that might very well be these wingbacks trying to make runs inside of inside forwards that receive the ball wide, or the wingbacks being so far up the field, they're looking for the inside forwards. But whatever the case, it's encouraging players that receive the ball wide to look for a run coming inside. But now it's time to start handing out medals, because the bronze medal finisher for the best tactic in football manager comes from Eland Guy, it's the classic X Juju. Simulated 9,600 times on the latest patch, this tactic is so satisfying. It is incredibly balanced. There's a Segundo Volante who departs and is then replaced by an inverted wingback. There's an inside forward on support, replaced by a fullback on attack who then occupies that wide space. There's a Regista who becomes the playmaker behind all of the players that are trying to make runs into the box. And it works ostensibly like an asymmetrical 4-4-2. And who who doesn't love a 4-4-2? The second best tactic in Football Manager, though, might be the simplest one of them all. Submitted by CBP87, it's the Katana 4231. You had to know the 4231 was going to be on here, but it does just look remarkably straightforward positionally. Two inside forwards on support, two fullbacks on attack, two defensive midfielders on support, advance forward, attacking midfielder. Now we're seeing a trend here because again, with inside forwards on support, we've got the underlap on on both sides, which means when that fullback receives the ball, they are going to try and seek to deliver a pass to the inside forward. But everything else lines up with what a lot of the best tactics are doing. And I imagine this might be one of those tactics that is most applicable to the save that you are playing. Because most teams have a collection of guys that can do this. This is just a 4-2-3 one with two defensive midfielders. Granted, it is on attack though, so it's pretty aggressive. The defense isn't bad, allowing just 46 goals on average per 38 matches. Now it's time for the best tactic on Football Manager. And before that, a huge thank you to FM Arena. They do some amazing work for the Football Manager community. They don't just test tactics, they have forums and they also test attributes. It's amazing, I've never made a video about the stuff going on there before, just to show uh, you guys that might not know about it, what's going on there. And if, you might remember we used to make those videos where I'd test like attributes and stuff. I stopped doing that when I discovered what FM Arena was because I realized that they were doing it way better than I would ever have the time or resources to do. So huge shout out to them. Their link will be at the top of the description. But the number one tactic in football manager is the ton 424 made by Gerard. In 14,400 match simulations, it averaged 65 goals per 38 matches while conceding just over one per match at 43. And for all the complicated tactics we've looked at, this is a straightforward bread and butter 424 formation. A lot of love for defensive midfielders this year, two DMs on support, two fullbacks on attack, two inside forwards, one on attack on the same side that there's a deeper lying forward, which is a classic move because this guy drops in here and then this guy is able to cut in kind of in front of him. It is a very balanced, very aesthetically pleasing tactic and it's gonna suit most of the teams you end up coaching. It is a classic example of the meta defensively and the meta when it comes to in transition. All of that on basically all of these tactics has been nearly identical. And in a very interesting twist, the best tactic has be more disciplined on as well as double under laps to take advantage of those inside forwards. It is narrow with the low crosses and the high tempo and the shorter passing like a lot of the other tactics we've come up against, but it turns
turns out the 424 shape and some pretty simple rolls is good enough to be the best tactic in football manager. It doesn't always have to be crazy and asymmetrical. It's just fun when it is. Hopefully this helps your save. I will see you guys back on stream where I'm trying to complete my journey from no coaching badges to the top of the freaking game of football manager. If you want to watch me and my friends rate your best tactics, you can check that video out as well. Don't even have to move a muscle. Only like a, a couple to move the mouse right over there. I wonder how many muscles that is.